Hello and thank you very much for purchasing my Dodging and Burning training title. Now, I just want to say a few things before we get into the lessons. Um, first of all, what is Dodging and Burning? Dodging and Burning is the, if you like, improvements in localised contrast, hue, and saturation and the distribution or redistribution of brightness, darkness, saturation, colour, colour hue, colour temperature, etc. etc. In inside your in inside your finished image, which helps to not only guide the viewer's eye through the image, but also helps you to emphasize the mood and atmosphere of the shot which is what made you capture it in the first place so a big misconception about dodging and burning with a lot of people is that a you don't need it and b only landscape photographers use it and one or two people understand that portrait photographers use it as well the thing is any image will benefit from dodging and burning in these lessons, we are going to look at the obvious landscapes and we're going to take this raw file and we're going to blend it with the sky from this raw file and using contrast adjustments, most likely using levels, we will burn areas of detail in this image and we will use various other dodge techniques and we'll end up with a shot that looks like that. Quite similarly, on the landscape front, we will take the foreground from this shot, because it's nice and sharp, and we will blend it with the background and the sky from this shot, because it's nice and sharp, and we will come up with a finalised image that looks something akin to that. Now, that satisfies the normal view of dodging and burning that most people have. The only thing is, as I said before, we can take a simple macro wildlife shot, in this case of a, a European adder, and we can take this raw file and with some very, very simple dodging and burning techniques, we can produce that rather nice looking, very soft, very detailed, wonderfully saturated, and textural image of this wonderful animal and you can see it's a vast improvement on the original raw file. We will also stick in with wildlife and macro because they are the sort of pretty much the polar opposite of a landscape so we will take this shot here of a brown hawk or dragonfly and we will dodge and burn and we will produce this lovely highly detailed and it is really a highly detailed shot and emphasizing the lovely colors of the eye and the thorax of the dragonfly. Using the techniques that we learn in these four different exercises, and don't forget the files are in a folder that you've just downloaded called Exercise Files, so you can work along with me. But utilizing those techniques that we learn there, we can then come and take this TIFF file, which is included in the exercise files, and we can move through a rather relatively simple dodge burn workflow and produce something akin to that. Dodging and burning, and especially in the way that I'm going to show you how I do it, you can't do it in Lightroom. It has to be done in Photoshop, and I'm just going to slip over to Photoshop and here we've got that self same image open and these are the layers which constitute this finalized image and one of the main things that i'm going to show you in the initial couple of lessons is why i do not use either the dodge or burn tools that have been in photoshop for ages and why i don't use the commonly taught black and white paint on a gray layer in the overlay or soft light blend mode. I'm going to show you the pitfalls of both of those methods 
and then I'll show you the benefits of working the way I work, which can be thought of, if you like, as colour dodging. Um, but it's a bit more than that. Um, we're also going to learn the benefits of constraining the um, regions where you place this, these dodge and burn effects using luminosity masks. And so you are going to see me use Ooh, Greg Benzie's Lumenzia, quite extensively throughout these lessons. Um, it doesn't have to be Lumenzia, it could be Tony Kuiper's TK Actions, it could be Jimmy McIntyre's Raya Pro, because their functionality is basically all identical. I actually prefer Greg Benzie's Lumenzia because it's nice and compact and very versatile for the amount of money that it costs. And I shall just put a URL down at the bottom of this video. Uh, I can't do interactive hotspots on my videos. I don't know why, but well, there you go. But I will just put a little bit.ly link down there. And if you go and sort of type that link out into a web browser, um, you'll go to a page on Greg's website where you can download uh, Lumenzia. Um, very reasonably priced, I hasten to add. And if you do use that um, URL... Um, Greg will pay me a couple of bucks because he likes me, yes. So, anyway, there we go. Um, I don't want to spring any surprises on you. So, I'm just saying from the outset that we are going to be making quite extensive uh, use of the Lumenzia uh, luminosity, action panel, luminosity Mask Action Panel. But, as I just said, it doesn't really matter whose actions you're using. Luminosity masks are simply luminosity masks so there we go i think i've uh, gone through everything i needed to go through and again a big thanks for purchasing these lessons and uh, speaking of which i think we'd better get on um, and by the way this is the last time you're going to see this ugly mug throughout this training title um you should always see me on youtube now but uh, seeing as you've paid for this i'm not going to be that cruel to you all right okay have fun I hope you find these videos worthwhile. I am fairly confident that it's going to uh, revolutionise your image output. I certainly am. So uh, there we go. Without any further ado, I think we'd better get stuck into the lessons. And uh, so I shall see you there, or not, as the case may be.